So let me crack into this one straight to the point. I've been laying back in my chair for probably the last two hours now, sitting back half asleep, watching my dogs kicking back, thinking what can I possibly get up to right now while I wait for the sun to set because I got into camp pretty early today around lunchtime, set up camp and everything was absolutely perfect. So while I'm sitting there, I'm going to roll you guys the clip right now. I was pretty proud of it actually. I pulled out my batwing awning and I... Uh, where I'm camped right now is on rocks, not sand, down by a river bank. And so what I've done is I've piled these rocks around the base of the legs for the awning. And yeah, I was pretty proud of that. I was so proud of it that I actually recorded it to show you guys like, hey, look what I've come up with. This is going to work really, really well to keep my awning down. And there's been bugger or wind. And then suddenly what's happened to start this episode off is this right here. My awnings just got picked up by the wind and absolutely thrown straight back over the roof of my ute there. Now the dogs are absolutely devastated because they've been loving the shade. Haven't you, mate? You've been loving it? As have I. So those awnings actually have a couple of eyelets on them that are... There's actually four, one for each pole that comes out horizontally. I carry a couple of spares on me. I've checked only two of them have snapped. So what I'm gonna do now is probably for the next half an hour, find them, find my tools, pull it apart, replace those while swiping away all these flies. And then I'm gonna fix that awning. So I'll get that done. And then we're gonna get into this episode. I'm gonna to explain to you guys what's going on, what this one's all about and why I am where I am and I'm not down south, etc., etc. Plenty to share, plenty to do, plenty to cook up, plenty to catch. Let's get this awning fixed and then let's get stuck into the episode. Now I've just chucked my fly net on because it's a little bit hard to swap flies away while you're trying to work with two hands. Uh, this is not how I wanted this to start. I cannot for the life of me get that to come back around. I have no idea what's happened here. This could take me a little while. I'll be back. All right, boom. You see that behind me? That is one fixed awning. Now it didn't actually take me that long to repair, but what I did have to do is switch the camera off, say a few words that weren't appropriate for television, and then she was all sorted with a couple of clicks of the fingers. So I'm back in business on that one. Very, very happy with that because having a broken awning like that can very easily ruin a camping trip like this one because the weather at the moment is about 40 degrees Celsius. The sun is absolutely piping hot. Even the water behind the camera is hot right now. My dogs haven't moved all day from the shade right here they can't walk on these pebbles because they're too hot so i really needed that awning and luckily we are back in business and i know that some of you watching this right now are probably thinking well serves you right for not sticking down the legs not putting your ropes out all that sort of thing and <coughs> that was a fly right there <clears throat> So I know you're thinking I probably deserve that and to you guys I would say you're probably right. I should have learnt by now to always stick it down because just because it's not windy at the time when you set your awning up doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. There's just one other thing I've got to touch on that we can laugh about to get stuck into this episode and that is what's down right next to me and I'll show you guys that right now and explain that as I go along. So when I got here earlier, it was really, really hot and I thought I'd be a bit of a hero and make a statement by cracking an egg on a rock and getting it to cook through. But all that ended up happening is it just turned into a goo ball. So instead, it's just like really sticky and stiff here. I'm just going to poke my finger. There you go. Whee! It's literally just gone like plasticky. Egg didn't cook. I look like an idiot, but it's okay. It's been very, very hot, but not hot enough to cook an egg on a rock. So I've actually got some pretty important stuff to say in this video 
I'm going to say it while holding the camera handheld because what that's going to do is make my arm really sore and then by my arm getting sore it means I can't stand here and talk too long so I won't dribble on and drag this on too much. To summarise things, the reason why I'm up in the Pilbara, the reason why I'm making this video and saying this is because I'm actually going to be moving here. Okay, I'm really struggling to word this right now. The reason why I'm leaving Perth, there's a few reasons. One, it's not somewhere I want to live forever, so I don't want to put roots down there, I don't want to buy a house there. It's not really anywhere that I look at and go, I'm going to make long-term decisions. It's just been somewhere that I end up moving to. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is I don't want to be there, I don't want to be in the capital city when the state reopens to the rest of Australia, just because of the mentality change in people, the whole environment, this year the, the restrictions, everything's just looking so crazy that it doesn't really look like a place that I want to be in. It's not that fun to be around when people start treating you differently even though you're the same person and you're still in the same city purely because of what's going on with how the government's structuring things. So I want to leave Perth for that, for that. And then of course, there's a reason that I live the lifestyle that I live and I do the things that I do. And what better place to do it than in the Pilbara? I, I've lived everywhere. I've lived on the south coast, the west coast, the east coast, but I've never lived up north. And when we say up north, up north, Western Australia, that's where I am right now. Never ever done it. And I've got no better time, no better reason to do it than right now. So me for work, I work as a plumber. I'm a licensed plumber. I work for a company at the moment in Perth, great company, very happy with my life, but I don't want to get comfortable in Perth. So I'm going to move up to Carrath is now going to be my home base. The sort of opportunities I'm going to have now, especially for my YouTube channel living in Carrath, is I'm going to have the whole northwest coast to try with fishing or the island hopping. I'm going to take my tinny up with me. The dogs will come, probably not straight away, but eventually. Mud crabs you name it just all these different sorts of avenues and things i've never tried and it's going to make it really interesting not only for me but for you guys watching because there'll be so many firsts for me that i'm just going to be super amped to get amongst it all and like right now this is my first time sort of being in this environment like this with a big freshwater river running through here one of this size pretty much inside of a big gorge here super cool it's so hot, look, <laughs> I just got Guthick's chilling with me. He's literally just sitting in the water, like a bath. Aren't you, mate? Oh yeah, you enjoy that cool water, mate. It's so funny when you, when I'm in climates like this, I enjoy it so much with the dogs. Look at him, he's somewhere down there. Yeah, it's so funny when I come to really hot places like this because the dogs, their mentality completely changes. So anytime it's cold, or just a reasonable temperature they're so full of energy and they just want to go 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 and they're really hard to manage but when i come somewhere hot like i pull the awning out and i set that up and then the, these rocks right here i'll show you these rocks so i've got all these rocks here and they are just red red hot from the sun like you cannot walk on them barefoot they're just unbearable so the dogs don't even want to walk on there and get their paws on there because it's so hot so they just want to be either in the water or laying on the mat so they're so easy to manage and it's so so funny to have them around anyway i'm not going to dribble on too much longer about all that because i'm sure i'm going to talk about it more in more videos coming up and stuff as my whole life sort of restructures but i'm moving up north i'm doing it on my own i'm bringing the dogs starting a new life starting a new chapter of my life i'm 26 years old not married no kids no mortgage what have i got to lose everything to gain so we're going to give it a crack and we're going to try this new life you guys are going to see it it's going to be absolutely awesome that's pretty much the summary right there for that one and with all that being said i think it's time we get back up to camp i want to cook up some food it's been so damn hot that all i've eaten today is like this little salmon and egg quiche from a bakery, I've got a coffee. It's so hot you can only drink the coffee in the air con of your car. If you're outside, you don't even want to drink it. And yeah, just haven't really eaten much food, but I've got a brownie mix up there. I've got pizza bases. I've got yabby nets in the water right now. I'm waiting for the sun to go down and then I can start pulling them out and checking them, see if there's some yabbies sitting in them. If there are, we'll cook some of them up. If not, I'm gonna make some pizzas. I'm gonna make some brownies in the oven tray that I've got for the Weber. Let's get on out of this water, much to Guthick's disappointment, and we'll get stuck into something else. Do you wanna come up, boy? There's Elmira walking on the hot pebbles. Quick, 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 quick. Oh, yeah, nice cool water, hey, Elmira. 
All right, we're gonna get this cooking. Do I really want it right now? Absolutely not. Will I want it tomorrow while I'm driving down the highway? Probably, so let's go. See if I can do this, eh? One hand like a hero. Well, I made that look a lot harder than I probably should have. Let's give that another crack. <laughs> Excuse the pun there too. Let's spoon out a couple of pieces of eggshell after that effort. Apparently about five tablespoons of butter, so I'm gonna assume that's about yay much. This is how easy it is and why it's pretty dangerous to be able to do this, because two eggs, a bit of butter, and then a uh, sugar reduced brownie mix right there. And I can literally bake a tray of brownies every single time I go camping. So yeah, as good as it is, I better not make this a habit. I'm just gonna stir that through now for probably the next couple minutes. There's that. You're not supposed to eat it raw because of the raw eggs, but there's worse things out there that'll get you. Now, Gonna fire this up. <laughs> Never mind. I'm gonna set that up before I fire it up. On goes the Weber. I don't really need to let it preheat. It's like 500 degrees outside right now. So in goes the brownie mix. See it in about 25 minutes. All right guys, so while those brownies are baking, in the Weber there, I've just gone and had my first pull of the yabby net that I've got sitting just in the shadows now. So as the sun's setting, these guys tend to come out and this is a red claw yabby. They're a pest in Western Australia. They want them out of the waterways. They're an introduced species, so you're allowed to take as many as you want any time of the year. This is the first one I had in there. So I'm pretty happy with that, which means I'm probably gonna have these guys on the menu for dinner tonight, which is pretty cool. I've never actually eaten these ones specifically because these are a northern species, but I'm looking forward to getting my hands on a few more and then having a nice dinner of these guys here caught by myself. Give you a nice close up look there. And you can see they just got the red tips there on the claws and the outer edges. That's obviously where they get their name from. So I'll show you how many of these guys I get onto later and then we'll cook them up. Oh, look at that. Boom. Okay, so I absolutely destroyed that with my knife trying to cut it. Nice little chalk, whoop, chalk brownie for the road. Like I said, it's pretty cool that you can make yourself some brownies and hit the road and just bake them on the way in your Weber, but at the same time, it is pretty dangerous to do that for the sake of your own health, but reduced sugar, 40% less sugar it reckons than its standard one, which is my kind of party, and that's got me sorted for about the next 20 minutes, probably. Come here. Come on, Bubba. It's a pretty good life I live, isn't it? It's the thing with making big decisions like this with moving town and everything. Like, I do live such a good and happy life for the most part. I'll admit that. It is what you make it, but I really, really love my life. So anytime you change anything, it's always a little bit scary just in case you make a bad decision and, and turn a good thing bad. But doing this, this is awesome. And I don't actually get to do this living in Perth. So this is something I can do more when I come live up here. So. How good is that? I'm actually gonna go jump in one more time. The dogs aren't interested for some reason. Normally they really, really love swimming, but they're just super lazy and knackered right now. Then I'll give these uh, yabby nets another pull shortly and see if I get onto a few more red claw and see if we can boil up some for dinner. We put up with it for too long. Some people change when they grow old. But I don't want to say that you've been wrong Cause I'm not that bold Through an empty bottle I can see it all so clear We're just broken people 
one more just now, just on sunset from the same net. So now that the sun is going down, these guys should start firing, hopefully. I've just moved the other one that hasn't caught any yet. And then we'll start fresh in a minute. I'll probably give them about half an hour, pull again, and then hopefully I get at least half a dozen and then I can cook them up for a nice big feed. All right, guys, I really wasn't kidding when I said I was gonna try to get these little red claw yabbies, crawfish, crayfish, whatever you wanna call them, all the same thing, out of fresh water, got little nippers and they taste delicious. So I've just had these guys in the fridge for a couple of hours now, trying to numb them right down. So what I'm gonna do with these tonight is I'm actually gonna boil these first, just to enough till they're just cooked, and then I'm gonna take the tails off and then use the tail meat to go on pizza with anchovies. So we're gonna be doing a red claw and anchovy pizza. It's gonna taste unreal and I'm super excited for it. I've never used freshwater crayfish on a pizza before. I've done it with saltwater lobster, but never these little guys with the anchovies. It's gonna just be one of the best things ever. So I slowed these guys down as much as I possibly can by having them in the fridge. And yeah, I'd, rather than stick a knife into its head to try and take it out or suffocate it or anything, I'm just gonna chuck them in the hot boiling water and it'll be over in a second and then I'll be eating these guys in no time. So it is one of those things like, obviously I'm not gonna call myself a hunter gatherer sort of thing, but in respects to nature, a lot of people don't get out there and catch their own food at all. So as much as some people might look at this and think it's inhumane or something to be eating something and physically seeing it moving and crawling around, I think it's much better that people do go out and respect nature and actually build a relationship with it to enjoy these sort of things and catch their own food. So each to their own, but six of these will be going in a boiling pot in a moment. Let's get it underway. I've only got a small pot, so hopefully I don't run out of space. So all those little red core now, six of them are in that boiling pot behind me and I'll probably give them about five minutes and then we'll pull them out, check them. I'll open a tail up and show you guys how they cooked up and even give one a crack because I've never actually eaten one of these ones specifically, like I said. So here they are sitting on the plate, all six of them that are just boiled up with the pizza sitting behind them. See if I can get a focus on that in the inside the net there there you go so what we'll do is we'll take the tails off of these guys now i'll chuck the majority of them on that pizza and then i might give one a crack just how it is as well and see how it goes on its own i'm going to get close up to the camera here and you're probably going to see just how humid it is out here i'm absolutely just like ringing sweat i'll I've rolled out the swag and I haven't put a single bit of bedding in there aside from a sheet. There's no sleeping bag, no doona, no nothing. There's pillows and a sheet. There's the meat of five of them pulled apart, split in two on the tails. And then there's one for demonstration just so you don't forget what it looks like. Rightio, on she goes. In fact, I need that shot with the red claw on there. Mm -mm -mm. You guys wouldn't believe my luck but I done it. I cooked it. I cooked it in the worst possible way. Absolutely cooked it. I don't know if there's any saving this either. <laughs> oh mate, that's, this has got to be the most painful thing I've ever done on video. So I'm going to give you a look right now. And there's a reason why there's no pizza sitting on there. And with all the photos and videos I was just taking, I put the pizza on a bit too much of a lean and let's have a squizzy. That's my pizza. That is my pizza that I just cooked. Well, didn't even cook, just prepped. And we're showing off to you guys and uh, yeah, I don't even know what to do or say right now. I am pretty bummed out with myself. <laughs> because deep down inside right now, I have it in my mind that I'm gonna be able to save that. 
because I did just drop it on this mat. The mat's relatively clean, like, yeah, but I just know when I flip that over, there ain't nothing coming back onto that base. I'm such an idiot. Such an idiot. This is one of those cases where if you do a little bit too much for the video and all that sort of thing, you just end up regretting it, and uh, that's what I've done what I've done. I'm not super hungry, but I was definitely super keen to eat this, especially with the way it was and cooking it properly and everything. Now, if I do cook it, you guys are going to know that I've just eaten a pizza off the floor, which is whatever. It is what it is. But damn, 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 that is painful. So let's see if I can save this pizza. No matter what happens from this point onwards, anyone watching this, just know that you've had a good day today, okay? Because I definitely haven't. All right, so I've got some cheese on there. There's a lot of cheese still stuck to the base. There's me one little yabby, me red claw that I can keep and eat because he's in a shell. Now, anything from the bottom that hasn't touched the ground, basically, has got a safe layer and I can just put that back on because I know it hasn't touched the ground, but anything that's face right down, what an idiot. The bits of tomato are all good, so pretty much the way it's looking is all the stuff that's on the bottom when I've made it is okay. Everything that's on top, me anchovies even, aren't too bad. Don't worry, this is still gonna be a good pizza. Don't you worry. Tomato slice here, tomato slice there. What's actually super fortunate is that when I was a pizza boy back for my first job, we got taught to put the cheese on the bottom. And then, hey, there's a huntsman come to the party right there and he's eyeing me off because he can smell all this food sitting on the ground. All right, all that sort of stuff's so what's hit the bottom. That can stay there on the bit. Nervous from this huntsman. I'm not gonna show this off again for a minute. I'm putting this straight on the Weber, exactly how it is. It's actually pretty good. All that sort of stuff there is what's collected it all. All this is really clean. Just looks as good as it were almost, but yeah, what a cock up. All right, I'm gonna scrape all this up, wet the whole area down. I'm already so annoyed by all the ants around here. And now they're just gonna be here to party well and truly. And they've been biting me. And there's a pretty big spider just out of view of the camera there. And I'm not liking it at all. I'll show you guys in a moment. But if he doesn't back off, I'm gonna to have to sort him out. Yeah, when the when the sun was setting early, I was literally looking around, I was walking around with my camera and everything, and I was thinking to myself, this has easily got to be the best camp that I've ever had in my life. That's 100% what I was thinking. Truthfully, I was thinking this has got to be the top, or at least like top one or two camps I've ever had. And as soon as the sun went down and it's we lost the last light, it's been pitch black since, man, I have been on absolute edge since i'm peaking i'm still loving the spot but because it's so remote like the, the nearest town of even like 10 people say maybe a fuel station is an hour away i am in the middle of nowhere on this river no civilization definitely no other people and so you just hear every noise that the the sky is super starry, it's everything you want, but it's so eerie and I'm on my own and luckily I've got the camera to talk to. Having the camera to talk to makes me feel half normal, like there's a person around. But just things like, there's these big crickets, big grasshoppers flying around. There you go, there's one now. Oh. And what they keep doing, Right, not, not for me to act like that and carry on, but what they do is, because I've got all these lights set up around camp, is they're just pinging between the lights, and I've literally got lights like on every edge of this awning. So what they do is they just come flying at me, smack me in the face, or land, land on my shoulder. There's only like three of them around. 
But man, you just be like, because you're already like, oh, what's going on, what's going on? And then suddenly something smacks you across the face. And they're big crickets too. I want to kind of want to show you, but I don't want to touch one. I don't even want to go near one because they'll just jump and land on me. So there's that. And then when I just dropped that pizza and then I was telling you guys about how there's a big huntsman just out of view of the camera. Well, I picked up the ingredients for the pizza and then I went to look for the huntsman and I was literally picking it up and then went to go, there's one of those crickets, went to go grab the camera to show you guys the huntsman and as soon as I looked up, like I'm talking a matter of seconds, gone gone and my swag was right next to where it was but I thought I just thought it was chilling chilling gone so there's a big huntsman that's probably going to be in my canopy or in my swag or on me at some <laughs> at some stage during during this I'm sweating like it's just so hot and humid that doesn't matter because when I wake up in the morning I'll jump in the the little pond there, but man, it's just one of those nights, eh? But anyway, I don't mean to dribble on, it's just, I've got to tell you guys all this stuff because I'm on my own and maybe, maybe I'll die. Maybe something happens to me and then, sure as hell, the camera will still be here. People can come recover the camera and go, all right, let's edit this episode up for Blackie and we'll go from there. But what I have just done, the reason why I actually set the camera up the way that I have is because I had a little bit of a thought and I wasn't going to, I was and I wasn't, I was like, oh, do I want to put herbs, got a nice Italian blend there of herbs for the pizza. Now, I was umming and ahhing about whether I put them on there and then I had a bit of a thought, I thought it was pretty funny and I thought it'd be worth sharing with you guys is that you sprinkle enough of these on because they're quite coarse you sprinkle them on your pizza like that, that you've just flipped on its head straight onto the ground. And then because they're coarse and chunky, you can't actually really tell the difference between these Italian herbs and the little bits of sand and dirt and grass and everything that you're eating that's on your pizza. So that was my little smart move there. So to make it so that I'm not questioning everything that I bought in that's got a little bit of crunch or a little bit of a tang to it or something, I'm just going to assume that it's Italian herbs and we'll roll with that. So this pizza's probably only got like another five or six minutes left to go. I'll pull it off, cut it in front of you guys, show it off. It's probably going to come up reasonably well to be honest, surprisingly. Um, yeah, she's been one hell of a night. I've got a man up, I'm out here, I've got me dogs, I'll show you my dogs. Right, look, there's G-Man, there's Elmira. You guys are being good, aren't you? You can escape and run away wherever you want, but you're choosing not to. Man, they're the best. There it is, I found it. I found the bloody thing. I found it. Please don't jump on me. Please don't jump on me, I'll go psycho. Just saw him moving. Why do I not feel good about that huntsman being right there on my awning? Mate, and he looks like he's just in game mode too. Hmm, so he's right there. There's my swag. Here's me set up. Me pizza cooking still. I am a fair dinkum wreck right now. Well and proper. I think I'm about one incident away from losing the plot. Anyway, my pizza's ready, let's get that off. I'm gonna leave that huntsman to its business. He's up there, right there. How do I do it right there? I'll leave him alone. Hopefully he does the same for me. I don't find him suddenly crawling through my car tomorrow while I'm driving. Okay. I don't know where I have a rag or a tea towel or anything like that, so I've wet some paper towel again. I'm gonna give myself about a two, two second window to get this off. Get it, oh, why would you? Ah, prick. See what I mean, man, this is all happening. A bug just flew on there, cooked itself. I'm getting bitten by ants again. All right, let's go, let's get this done. 
Oh, why does that make me nervous straight away too? They are hot too. Sit it down there, a little something, something like that. And then a little something, something like that. Oh, man, these ants, oh, I'm literally getting bitten so hard. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Let's have another look sis. Oh, mate. All right, sorry mate. You can sit over there for a minute. I wish I could honestly share with you guys the amount of bugs so you could experience it right now that are just destroying the serenity. That's all I can really say. They're just destroying the serenity. They're not they're not really hurting me except for the ants. The ants are really bitey. But aside from that, just serenity. Right. We go like this. There's my pizza. I dare not tip it any further this time. I'm gonna eat that. So I started making this pizza around 8 p.m. ish, I reckon, with all the filming and everything, and we're just going on to 11 p.m. now. All right, guys, I'm trying my absolute hardest to stay composed right now. As you can see, I just look like a hot, sweaty mess. This is like one of my favorite shirts, and I've absolutely destroyed it today, which is fine. You get that. These things happen. There's just ways to go about things, and if you destroy it in a cool way, then cool, but this has just been destroyed by me flipping pizzas over on their head, and I don't even know what else, but the pizza's done. I'm not going to slide it up to you any more than it is right now, because we're going to have a repeat of what happened before. I've got a chair over there behind me. That's my camp chair that makes a feature in every single video I make, and that's going to get planted right here. I'm going to sit down, I'm going to eat this pizza, I'm going to enjoy it, I'm going to try to enjoy it, I'm going to get smacked in the head by a four inch cricket just doing 100k an hour and it's going to just blow my mind, I'm going to probably flip over on the chair, it's all going to happen, then the huntsman's going to drop on my head, I really don't know, it's going to happen though, something's going to happen. First look at the first piece of this pizza that's been dropped on its head. Let's do this. <clears throat> this one's got a bit of everything on there. See how she tastes. And when I say a bit of everything, probably literally a bit of everything. Absolutely everything. Mmm. But that tastes bang on. Bang, bang on. That is amazing. So, thanks to those Italian herbs being able to cover up the shenanigans that were, this is one, hear that cricket? This is one good pizza. I'll just know there's a cricket coming for my head in a second. That is an amazing pizza and I thought there was absolutely no way that I was saving this. But we got there. Oh. All right. Mozzies, bugs, everything. I'm gonna lose me mind, but I'm not gonna lose my mind on camera. We'll do it in my own privacy. I'm gonna try and finish the rest of this pizza and I'll be back in a second. There's no fun way to say this. <laughs> this has hands down been like, it's been the best and the worst night I've ever had camping. Oh, here we go ever before and 
my mind is just blown. Like this place is off the charts for tranquility. The red claws, great fun to catch, great eating. You just don't find a better campsite than this. But the amount of animals around here that have me on edge, insects, bugs, you name it, spiders, cows, wild bloody bulls, whatever they are, just sitting in the shadows somewhere lining me up. I don't really know. It's been fun. This has been one of the most fun episodes I think I've ever shot, I reckon. It's so simple. Like, I literally started this one just to tell you guys that I'm going to be moving to the Pilbara in a few weeks, and then she's turned into this. And that's the beauty of it. It's fun. It's funny. What do you do? You just go along with the ride. But what I'm definitely going to do tomorrow morning is wake up and just really, really ease into the day. I'm not going to rush off or anything like that. I've been toying with the idea of staying here an extra night just because it is such a cool spot, but I'm probably going to hit the road and start heading south back down towards Perth and maybe do a couple more stopovers along the way. Maybe even a beach camp too, get a bit of beach fishing in, drone fishing again, all that sort of thing, rather than just stay out here the whole time because it's going to get red hot again today or tomorrow, I should say. It's almost midnight now. So yeah, I'm going to wrap this episode up here. The camera will not be coming out straight away tomorrow. I'm going to work it out, ease into it, enjoy myself, enjoy the drive. Thanks heaps for watching this one. I hope you guys are excited for me to move up north, start a new chapter of my life, all that sort of thing. I hope you've enjoyed the pizza, my mess ups tonight, the whole lot. She's been, she's been a pretty wild ride, but it's half the fun. So thanks heaps, guys. I'll see you guys in the next episode. I don't know why I blew kisses at the camera, but I did, so sorry about that one. I'll see you later. Thank you.